Hello everyone, my name is Sik. Welcome to a special video. This may be a one-off kind of video, but I wanted to try something new. Some of you may know that a few years ago I got into the Warhammer hobby, and today I wanted to start a video about me basically trying to kitbash a intercessor sergeant. So I've got a box here, the Primaris Intercessor uh, group. It's a group of 10 warriors, but today we're going to start working on the sergeant. Now the sergeant is this guy in the middle with the red helmet, and he's quite interesting because we can build him up in three ways, and I had a special idea for him. So if you open up the box, um, right, inside we find an instruction manual, right? So inside it gives us all the instructions about how to build this dude, all pretty basic, but we have, for the Intercessor Sergeant, we have three different options in which we could build him. So um, we have this version right here where he is kind of pointing with his weapon up, we have a version where he is having a weapon pointed up with his main weapon slung onto his back and he's looking at a wrist mounted screen, and then finally um, there's another one that I can't quite make out. Let's see, let's have a look, what is he doing there? Kind of pointing his hand up in the sky for some reason, I don't know exactly why. <laughs> anyway, uh, the one that I want to do is the one where he has his weapon swung onto his back. Because it is the most interesting pose, of course. And not many models have this pose, so I would like to have that one. However, I would like to do something different with it. Um, I still want to have the back on the web, uh, the weapon on the back, of course. Um, but the intercessor sergeant is actually allowed to take a chain sword, as detailed in the Space Wolf Codex that I've got right here. I bought this yesterday. I've been having a look through it. Um, I will probably not find the rules straight away, but they're in the back somewhere. And I think. All the intercessors are allowed to take a chain sword. We can have a look really, really quick. Find the block cost. Ah, here we go. Intercessors. Uh, all models in the unit may replace a bolt rifle with an auto bolt rifle or stalker bolt rifle. Okay. For every five models in the unit, one may take an auxiliary grenade launcher. And the intercessor pack leader may either replace their bolt rifle with a chain sword or take a chain sword in addition to their other weapons. So it doesn't say anything about any other intercessors. But the sergeant is allowed to take a chainsword. So that is exactly what we are going to give him because that is freaking awesome. Now, in order to help us do that, I've got several options. I have got a Primaris upgrade kit for the Space Wolves right here. Um, it does include a chain sword, but it is on the wrong arm. So we may have to do some work with that as well. And of course they have several uh, shoulder pads with the Space Wolf iconography on there, which we are going to give him as well. So we are definitely going to use some of that. I have also got leftover bits from another Space Wolf kit. These are not the Primaris Marines, but it does actually have some cool chain swords as well, and they will be on the right, correct side. Um, so, we may be able to use some of those. Right. On top of that, um, since the regular marines are not the same size as the Primaris marines, uh, the arm, if I use that one from that kit, might be may not be the correct size, but I've got some leftovers from a Reaver kit as well, a Primaris Reaver kit. Now these guys, um, do I have the correct one? Yes I do. We have some arms with knives on it. I may be able to replace the knife with the chainsword. I am not entirely sure yet. I have to take a look at how the hands are positioned exactly, but we may be able to cut off the hand right there, keep the arm, cut off the hand, replace that with a chainsword, and maybe that will be the chainsword from the Space Wolf kit, because one of them is probably going to have like a wolf head on it, I think. Um, I'm going to have to keep uh, checking this a little bit later, because I'm not entirely sure, but I think we can get a pretty cool chainsword. If not, we may be able to use the chainsword 
from this kit because it might be the correct version for the Primaris. I don't know if there's a size difference in the weaponry as well. Finally, though, I have some leftovers from the Gene Stealer Cultist kits. Um, my idea is that I can take one of these hands or arms or something like that and maybe I can glue that onto the arm of the intercessor sergeant that is kind of going up, right? So let's have a look if we have that, uh, right, so he has the pistol, um, if you can see, right there, where is he, in the middle there, his arm is kind of raised up, right? So in that arm, maybe, we will be able to put a ripped off arm that he just sawed off with the chainsaw. So, first things first, we are of course going to have to take a look at all the things that we need to get the basics up and running. So, let's have a look. We've got the Primaris Sergeant. Now we've got, um, let's have a look, we can give him different poses I guess. Because I'm kind of curious which pose we need exactly. I think it's the top one, but we'll see. Anyway, I'll start clipping out some pieces and I'll see you guys in a second. Now, just a quick note on the tools that I'm using. I've got a pair of Citadel cutters, extremely useful for cutting out parts of the frame. I've got a little drill that will allow me to drill holes into gun barrels, but maybe also it can be useful for some of the kit bashing that we will have to do. Uh, got some tweezers, can be useful to keep things into place. And finally, I've got a Citadel range cutting knife, which slides out like so. Pretty basic, but sharp as hell. Um, <laughs> I've injured myself with it before. I once left it open like this. I had it near my table edge. I accidentally dropped it off. It got stuck in my leg. I was bleeding like a stuck pig all over my apartment. It was not fun. So we need to be very careful with this stuff. Anyway. Um, so the parts that I decided to go for, and I'll grab the instruction manual for just a moment, is this pose right here, because it looks like he's leaning forward a little bit, and I wanted to make it look like he leaned forward into a lunge, where, you know, he used his chainsaw to cut off someone's arm, and where his other arm goes up like he ripped it off after sawing through it. So for that we need part 34, 33, 35, 36, 37, and 38 and those will form the main body. Now I found number 34 and 33 and uh, we've got number 33 right here. So all we really need to do is get the cutters right, and we will line them up next to the part that we want cut through it. Now it is important to keep the flat side. The flat side should be right next to the part that we want to cut and not the other side because the other side is kind of curved and it will push the bit, push the bit away that we want to have and that can potentially damage the thing and we don't want that so another part that we have right here is number 34 so again let's put the cutters right there snip it And we will continue like this until we have all the parts that we need. Alright, so I've cut out the parts that we need for the main body. And the first thing that we've got to do now is we need to look for mold lines. Now, if you don't know what mold lines are, they are parts of the, the sprue that we have here, for example. Now, these things came from, uh, of course, the factory. And the factory has like a mold that they put the glue into and it's basically like two sides they smash together and sometimes or usually there will be a little bit leftover plastic on the side where the two pieces of the mold came together now that doesn't belong on the model and it looks very weird so we need to look out for that and cut it off or at least scrape it off we don't want to cut it but you can see it right here probably on this little leg there is a part where you can kind of see a little line that doesn't look like it belongs there. So what we need to do 
as we grab the knife and very gently scrape. Now you can't quite see what I'm doing, I need to turn a little bit. Right, and I'm not sure if the lighting is okay. But we just put the knife like so. And gently scrape off that little line that we don't want there in this position. Because when you paint it up, it will still be very visible. And you can do the best paint job in the world. But it will look ugly as hell. So, every time you cut out a piece, I'm just, or every time I cut out a piece, I'm just going to go back and forth over it a little bit like this, looking at all the places where these mold lines exist, and I'm going to try to cut them off. Same thing on the back of the leg, front of the leg, both places have this mold line that I don't want it to be, or where I don't want it to be. So I'm just going to very gently go through it with my knife. Now I'm going to do this for all my parts. I'll see you guys in a second. Ah, another thing that I should mention, I'm looking at this knee pad right here. And of course, where I cut it off, there's a small part left over at the top that doesn't belong there. So that's another thing that we need to keep a lookout for. And we're going to have to cut it off ever so gently as well. Alright, now with all of that done, when you are sure that you've got all the mold lines and when you've got all the bits where you cut off the, um, the bit or the part of the model from the sprue, when all of that is cleaned up, it is time to glue these things together. Now, um, I've kept my legs separate with the grief that should be on there because I don't want to get confused, but these things should fit on nicely there. Fit it on there neatly. There we go. Just click it into place, I guess. Now we don't have the glue in there yet, so it's not going to stick. But this is how it's going to look. Now we're going to do that for both legs, and of course, we're going to glue the torso together. Um, I've got my Citadel glue. Now, one thing that I find to be really annoying is that the glue sometimes keeps pouring out. The nozzle of my thing is really badly messed up. You can see the glue on the bottom there doesn't look good. Uh, more importantly though, uh, <laughs> sometimes the thing gets stuck. Or it doesn't get stuck, but the glue doesn't come out. Now, for that I have my little lighter. And usually every time I work with this, I hold my lighter by the little nozzle. Right now there doesn't seem to be much of a flame, so it should be pretty clear. Um, one note of concern for me personally is I am allergic to this glue. So if I get any of this onto my fingers and I start rubbing it on my forehead or something like that, I'm going to have one hell of a time the following day. It is not going to be pretty because, trust me, I had it happen to me. <laughs> it really sucks. Anyway, we should glue these things together. So, um, just going to grab it, put a little bit of glue on the inside in some various various pieces. For example, this little, there's a little block in here that is going to fit perfectly onto the leg. Right, in comes the glue. Not too much for me personally, again, because I'm allergic, I don't want to overspill. But we just fit it on there, click it into place, and that leg is done. Same thing over on this side. Just a little bit of glue, various parts, it is important to spread it out a little bit. Now the really nice thing about this glue is that it melts the plastic a little bit. And that means when you click it into place, it is going to really adhere to the other surface. Because it's going to basically melt and become part of it. Alright, so let me just... God damn it. <laughs> Let's fit into place really quickly, really neatly. Alright. The leg is done, put this to the side, and already I can feel myself becoming a little bit nervous <laughs> about spilling glue everywhere. 
Now I've got the torso, and again, same thing, apply glue sparingly. Also, because we don't, if we overspill and you push the pieces together, it can come out the sides. And it will be visible on the model later, which is not something that you want. So again, apply sparingly the various parts. If you can, put it all the way around, but not too much. And then you just click it into place on the torso. Now then, we've got the both, both of the legs. And at this point, we can also just glue on the legs. Because one should fit in on the one side. Let's have a look at how that's going to fit. So this is going to push into that side right there, yeah. That's a little uh, hole in there. And this one has a little thing that sticks out. So these things, they fit together. And I'm going to glue this together, and I'll see you guys in a bit. Alright, so, I glued the guy together. Um, his legs are on there. And now this guy is basically complete. I don't put him on the base quite yet, because I'm not quite sure what I want to do with the base. But for now, I'm just going to put him off to the side. And while it dries, and it's very important, you know, push everything firmly together, make sure it sticks, keep it there for a little while, and then just let it dry for a while. Meanwhile though, we can work on something else, and one of the things, of course, is going to be the chainsword. Now, I found the chainsword that I want to use. It is actually going to be this chainsword right here, with the cool wolf face on it, or the wolf head on it. So, I'm just going to go back to my clippers, and we're going to cut out this part. So, right there, there's one at the very tip, which is a really awkward position to put a connection. I don't know why they chose to go for that one, but oh well. All right, now, we have those parts, or we have this part. One problem that you might notice straight away on the wrong side. Right, if you grab a little sergeant there, this arm actually goes on the left side. Now this works well, normally speaking, but it doesn't do what I want it to do. Right? I want it to be on the left arm, like it just came in from the st from a stroke. So in order to do that, to do that, we need to go to our reaver kit that we have over here, and we can get one of these sword arms. Now, I'm not sure which arm will be the good pose exactly, because this one kind of goes in front of his uh, stomach there, which I don't particularly like. This one could be okay, and this one is all basically a dry fit, uh, also goes up like that, which I don't like. So probably for our purposes, this arm right here is going to be the best fit. So, again, grab the clippers. Cut out the part that we need. Put this off to the side for a moment. Alright, so now what we want to do is we want to grab this sword. Right? This sword right here. And we want to put it on this arm. So, we're going to have to very carefully cut off the hand and try to glue it onto uh, this one. This is going to be the tricky part. Um, so on this arm, we want to keep the main arm intact. We don't care about the hand, we don't care about the knife, because it's not going to be used again. So that means that when we use the clippers, we're going to put the flat side against the arm and not against the hand. And we can snip off a little bit, a little bit away from the wrist, and very carefully cut off the other part. Now, this arm is ready. This one can be used. In a while, we can put this arm onto this body. Just glue it on right there. Of course, we're not quite there yet. 
we want to get the sword. And this time around, we want to keep the arm intact. So we should probably switch the clippers. I've never done this before, so this is all new to me, but this is what my logic tells me. Uh, we should put the flat side towards the sword. And again, first we should probably cut a little bit away from the wrist. Put this side that we're not going to use off to the side. Right. Now maybe the light isn't good enough, let me just check this. Hopefully it's going to be a little bit better. So I can't quite tell if this is clear enough or not. Anyway, um, we need to cut off a little bit more I think. Or maybe we can just put a dry fit it for a moment. So this arm is going to be, well, it's really finicky, going to be like this. And this is going to fit on like so. Now, we've got a double joint here. That looks kind of weird. I'm not sure if you can see it. Let me just try to get a better angle on that. So this is going to fit together in this fashion. Now we've got a double fit. Now we've got like um, a round thing around the wrist that is doubling up. And we don't want that because that looks very weird. So we need to be very careful in trying to cut off this circular part. And probably we want to do it in small parts. Maybe just make a little incision even into the wrist and where it connects to the wolf head. Cut into that a little bit. Crap. I made a mistake already. That damages the wolf head just a little bit. Right. Not too bad, I think. Overall. Now, of course, we do need to clean this up. It's not perfect. It's not a great cut. So we grab the knife. And we should carefully very carefully scrape this off a little bit make it flat and flush now on this side the ear is kind of snipped off which is really unfortunate it does mean that we need to clean this up a little bit so I think we're going to cut in here just a little bit in an attempt to flatten this out again very careful not to cut myself of course All right, so a little bit more it's not quite where I want it to be right so now it's it's kind of flat again I'm not sure if you can see it let me zoom in on that for a little bit All right so the wolf head is kind of flat again And the same thing goes for the arm, kind of need to, uh, or for the hand actually, this part needs to be flat so that it fits nicely. We have the wrist part right here, also this needs to be very flat, so we're going to scrape a little bit. Well, that looks pretty good. Again, check for mold lines if you see any, or the parts where you cut this thing from the sprue, like right there. Need to make sure that this is nice and flat. Now then, so far, I have to say it looks pretty good. We have a little bit of a mold line on the wolf head. So let me just try to scrape that off. Right, I'm not sure if you can see it. I hope you can. The other parts of this uh, sword are pretty detailed, so you cannot really tell if it's not what it's supposed to be. Uh, again, I should probably clean this up a little, the side of the wolf head as well. So now that this so that this part sits flat as well. Let's have a look. Very softly, very gently. Cut off little bits and pieces 
to make it look symmetrical, to make it look flat. And again, I need to be careful not to cut myself because that is very dangerous. Anyway, this looks pretty good to me, so we should glue these parts together. Right, let me zoom out. There we go. Now, if you have any tips on how to improve these videos, and I, already I think lighting is going to be a big one, but I can't quite tell. Um, please leave a comment in the video or in the yeah in the comments below, <laughs> basically, and um, I will try to improve if I do this sort of video ever again because I'm not sure I don't have enough money to keep doing this all the time. All right, there goes the glue. Put it a little bit against the wolf head as well. Now we need to push this into place. Now let's have a look at exactly how we want it. Now I'm going to keep it in place like this for a little moment until it kind of stays put. It doesn't take forever. In fact, it already kind of fits. I'm going to hold it just a little bit longer. Actually, maybe I shouldn't push it too much. I, yeah, no, okay, I've got the correct position now. <laughs> kind of nervous about, you know, messing things up. Again, this is the first time I've actually put a different sword on a different arm, so... It's going to hold it in, in place. It's going to be okay for now, I think. Right, so if we go to our model, it's going to be in this pose. You can't quite see, I know, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's going to be... Is it the... Again, I don't want to overdo it too much, but the angle looks good. I'm going to put this thing down, I'm going to let that dry. Right? It's going to be okay. Put it off next to the side along with the other uh, bits of the model. Now then, the next thing, and let me grab the instruction manual again, is going to be the gun arm. And it's going to be, which part exactly is going to be number 61. So, let me just get this part off of the sprue, and I'll see you guys in a second. All right, so it is time to experiment a little bit again. I've got the part that I need. It is this part right here. Um, so basically we have the gun that is slung behind the back, right there. Of course we've got the arm that goes up, so if we dry fit this into place for a moment. Um, this is roughly the way it is going to look. Again, the lighting might not be perfect. Um, I'm doing the best I can here tonight. Uh, it's still early springtime at the moment which means the days are short but basically this is roughly how it is going to fit so I just need to make sure that this is the way it's going to be now what I had in mind for this um, I'm going to put this part to the side for now but basically I think we're going to have to do another hand switch I think we're going to cut off this hand and the pistol and we're going to use the rest of this arm and we should get another Space Wolf part. So I've got two sprues here. I've got the Gene Stealer Cult and I've got the Space Wolf sprue. Now, one of these hands is usable for us because this is one of the gun arms. Um, maybe this is a little bit clearer. But the one that I'm pointing at right now, it has this little arm that is normally gripping a bolt gun. Right, so in this particular case, we could use this to hold the gun of an alien in its hand along with the arm that he just cut off. So I think one of these hands is going to fit our purpose. Now I think this one is going to be the best one for us because the other one has little studs on the knuckle. And it does look cool, but it doesn't fit with the rest of the model, which does not have these studs as far as I remember. Let me just really quickly check. Oh. No, it does not have studs. So, 
I'm going to cut this out. And again, uh, grab the clippers. Actually, you might not even need to cut it out, but we're not going to use the rest of the hand anyway. So we're just going to cut out the whole thing. Right. Um, put this off to the side because we are not going to need it anymore. That is one bit that we need. Now, another thing that I wanted to get is probably this gun right here. Why? Because it has an alien claw. This one looks pretty alien as well. It has a cool tattered looking um, bit of cloth on the shoulder. And the back side of it is actually this arm is already kind of jagged. It already kind of looks weird. Like it's cut off or something. So that kind of fits my purpose quite well. So, that is what we're going to do. I am going to... Or maybe there's a different one that's better. I'm not entirely sure, but the other ones look quite human. What about this one, though? Because I like this arm a little bit better, maybe. Yeah, this is a really clean cut, though. Not sure if I can make that work. Yeah, of course, we can cut into it and mess things up a little bit, and that is going to be really cool. We can maybe also go for a different arm entirely. Something with a flamethrower, like you rush the guy with a flamethrower and then kill him. That would be really cool. Or this one. This one, because these have all the really weirdly mutated arms and stuff. But maybe that's actually for the best. I, you know what? I'm just going to go for that one. Shouldn't think about it too much. There we go. Like, I want to make a cool model. I don't know how to paint that carapace thing that this alien has going on. So that is something that I'm going to have to figure out. But it's going to look pretty cool. Oh. No, down falls the bit. Right, so let's get rid of this prue. Now hopefully, these things should fit together. So maybe I can actually grab the gun like this. Or grab the arm. Now this fits. So this could work. Um, <laughs> but where do I want to grip it? Like, we could grip it on top there. But we actually kind of need to dry fit it into place just to see how it's going to look. And how much room we actually have. So, in this particular case, I think what I want to do here is I want to glue this part on. Just so that we know how this part is going to end up looking and how much space we have to work with. So that really is going to depend on how we are going to glue the gun onto the arm. One thing is sure though, we do not need this pistol. So we're going to cut that off. And I hate doing this because I'm so afraid to mess things up and destroy a cool model. But I'm going to have to do it if I want to make my idea come to life. So, cut off bits and pieces, don't cut the whole thing all at once, because that way you can make mistakes much more easily. Now then, um, this hand, how would that fit though? Because this is a weird turn for the hand, I guess, doesn't look natural. Maybe we need to turn it a little bit, I don't know yet, we're going to find out. <laughs> I, hadn't, I had not actually considered that last part. Alright, so we're going to keep cutting away. Little bits and pieces all at a time. There we go. Getting very close now. Grab the knife a little bit, because we need to clean up this little stump. Make it nice and even. And I think that works quite well. Now then, same thing with the hand. going to keep the hand 
I'm going to cut off the rest <laughs> of the arm. We launched it quite far there. Um, again, cut it off in bits and pieces so that it doesn't, the plastic doesn't break. And that way you have a lot more control. Now I'm not perfect, I can make mistakes. Um, but I've done a little bit of kit bashing before, just once before, and that turned out pretty well. And I've watched plenty of other YouTube videos where people were doing it, including the official Warhammer ones. And they're really cool, really useful, and they can give you a lot of cool ideas. As well as the techniques on how to actually implement your ideas. Alright, so this looks pretty smooth and flat. So these things should fit together. And again, I'm still not quite sure how, because this way his thumb is the wrong way. Um, damn it. Ah, man, these little finicky bits are a little bit annoying. Oh, what can you do? Right, we cannot actually make this look correct. <laughs> How do we, how are we going to fix that problem? So I could technically maybe cut off the finger, glue it on on the other side, but that's going to look very weird. So you know what? I'm going to have a, I'm going to have to have a look at the other bits and pieces that I might be able to use for this. I'll be right back.